Well, here we are on 4.3, given a scenario, optimize cloud environments. So this is part of 4.0, operations and support, which is 22% of the CompTIA Cloud Plus exam. So once again, we're using the exam object objectives for CV0003, which I'll link to this down below. Hey, I caught it this time before the end of the video. Sweet. Um, and this is the section we're doing right here, 4.3. Happy day, let's get started. So, right sizing. So what should the size be of the application you're running? And this matters less if you're doing serverless, but it still matters. So how big should something be? And how is it going to scale? Are you scaling horizontally? So when you scale horizontally, um, think about if you're making food for yourself. I used this uh, analogy recently with, with some students. If you're making food for yourself, so that's the, the portion that you're making. Well, if, so it's enough for one person. If 20 people show up, you just make 20 more of those, okay? So that's scaling horizontally. 20 more of the same size. But it takes a long time if you're going to make 20 bowls of soup one at a time. So maybe instead you get a bigger pot and you make a pot that's the size for 20 people. That's vertical scaling. Um, so you just make one bigger. Now, a lot of people will probably use vertical and horizontal because it doesn't make sense to go to adjust the pot size all the time. And and sometimes just having more um, is a good idea. I like to have at least two always running. So, uh, in fact, I think of it as N plus one. The number I need plus one more. If I only need one because I've I sized it at that size, then I have to have at least two running. If I need two, then I need three. Um, because I expect that one will die. One, of the, one will go away. Or when I'm patching, I have to take one out and the others have to handle the load. Now, that that thinking can go up to however size you want. But managing a hundred of something is a lot harder than managing 20. So there are times when you want to scale a little bit vertically and a little bit horizontally, but probably not all vertical and probably not all horizontal. It depends on the size of your application. Uh, amazingly enough, most applications are teeny. So uh, the vertical scaling doesn't make sense on a small application because you only need one small thing. So then you just do horizontal scaling of, of one more. So at minimal. And then if you get load, scale one more and reevaluate when it gets to a certain size. Um, it, it just depends on your organization. So. I personally would, if it's really small and I have five of them running, I might want to rethink uh, how how big it should be. Maybe maybe vertical scale it a little bit the next time I upgrade it. Um, or maybe it's growing in popularity quickly and I have to I have to manage it right there. And then cloud bursting. What can you do to get um, immediate uh, uh, help when needed? So. Uh, with cloud bursting, that's specifically when you have stuff usually in-house and you run out, you're running out of capacity at, at your local data center, so you burst it to the cloud. Um, it's a lot easier to pay to scale in the cloud than to wait to get more stuff into your local data center. So compute. Um, this follows the same thought with what we just talked about, vertical and horizontal scaling. Uh, CPU is something you have to think about. Uh, how much CPU do you need? And the cool thing with cloud resources is, uh, like I mentioned, a lot of systems are really small. Um, I've ran a lot of systems off of two CPUs that are really teeny because they don't need anything more. In fact, they only need one, but I don't like to do less than two for the same reason 
uh, before. It's just, uh, anyway, what about GPUs? I mean, a lot of my systems don't even really need GPUs, um, but it depends on what you're doing. Sometimes GPU is the right resource, especially machine learning. That might be the one that you want to choose. So um, do you need more CPU or more GPU? Um, when it comes to uh, the CPU and GPU, what size, how many cores, uh, what, what do you need to, what do you spe specifically need there? Um, and are, you pay for what you use with cloud. So it might be in your local data center, you have a lot of wasted CPU uh, and you're paying for that. Well, if you just migrate things over into the cloud and keep wasting CPU, then you'll pay for it as well. Um, so be mindful of, uh, of the capacity. Try to right size like the prior one uh, that we talked about. Memory is the same thing. Now, I will reiterate with memory of everything. Memory is the one I do not like to skimp on. Um, I don't want to go overboard, but when you run out of memory, bad things happen. And it's an easy one to run out of uh, when something runs amok. So, but you shouldn't hide bad things by ex excessive memory. Um, just give you enough time to be able to try and handle it before things get bad. Uh, and then containers. Um, how are you going to right size those with, and, and decide what's, what's correct, uh, good for containers? Storage. Um, what's the tier? So when it comes to, well, the speed, what speed do you need? Do you need really slow spinning disk or do you need super fast SSDs or something in between? Um, a lot of systems have this adaptive optimization that can, that can occur, um, where things that are really busy at that moment can be moved to faster stuff and everything else can stay on the slower, um, I had some nightmares with storage, so I don't like to do that. Um, I I want storage to be reliable, available, and serviceable. And uh, adaptive optimization was new when I was using it. It's been a long time. It's probably fine now. But it's I've had not good experiences with stuff like that in the past. IOPS, how much, how many operations can be coming in and out? Uh, capacity, how much can you store? Is it deduplicated? Uh, so are you storing 10, well, 10,000 copies of Microsoft Windows because you have tons of Windows servers um, or Linux? Or do you deduplicate that so that you don't have to store all those copies on disk? Now, once again, my, my I have had some bad experiences with this, but that's because it was earlier on and it was on slow disk. If you deduplicate on slow disk, you're going to have IOP issues with any type of performance. It, well, when it, when, when it gets hit. And that's same with compression. You're trying to do more with less disk. Well, if your disk is slow and it's doing more, it's just going to cause nightmares. So just be careful. Um, Whenever you go down these paths, make sure you're monitoring well and you have people that understand things well uh, because too many don't. Um, and storage is not a pl place that I like shiny new things. I want storage to be reliable, available, and serviceable. It's RAS. Um, I don't want it to be shiny and new. Network. So the bandwidth. How, how much bandwidth do you have? Uh, how many network controllers do you have do you are you multi-homed uh what is the latency uh that you're getting going to different places um do you have a service delivery network uh, what about edge computing a content delivery network oh sorry software defined network do you have a software to, uh, software defined network sdn so your network is, is set up with code um with edge computing content delivery network do you have um, stuff stored in multiple locations. And when someone tries to hit it from their location, they hit, they hit the closest one to them. So if someone in Japan is trying to hit something from, um, 
from Brazil, um, that, that from a company in Brazil, but that company in Brazil has content delivery network. They'll, they might hit something in Japan or maybe it'll be in Hong Kong. Um, it'll be closer to Japan. They won't have to go all the way to Brazil, um, to get the content. So getting it as close to people as possible uh, so that they, you avoid the latency, the network, uh, traffic and stuff. Optimize, uh, are things placed in, why are they placed there? Are they geographical? Are they in clusters? Their redundancy? Do you have co-location? Um, and then devices and firmware, um, So are your devices and firmware, are they generic? Are they, are they a specific vendor? Are they open source? Um, I got to tell you with performance, this all matters. Um, I, I've, I tell the story often of a group that was presenting at a conference I was at that talked about how they threw tens of thousands of dollars at this dinky little application they were running. It, it's a huge application, but it was, they're a really small implementation and uh, in fact, it got to hundreds of thousand. Um, and it made no sense to me because they were so small. Uh, and I knew this application well. And then at the end, they said, oh, and we changed this configuration parameter. And I'm like, that was the problem the whole time. They bought tons of hardware <laughs> to try and hide something because they hadn't done the settings right. Maybe your firmware has a performance issue. You need to patch it, update it. Uh, get it get a better one from the vendor if possible sometimes generic is the right way to go um but there are other times when you definitely need the vendor specific ones now i will say once again make sure when you patch things you test them well um i i remember someone patching um stuff and because of a driver issue, uh, it constantly started blue screening when certain things happened, uh, crashing the system or purple screen, I think is what it was. Uh, so anyway, um, make sure you test things as well, but you've got a patch. Um, there's so many benefits to patching. And if you don't do it well, you should not not patch. You need to learn how to do it well. So um, anyway, we'll see you in the next video.